ego. That's why Shmuel, Shmuel is behaving the way he is because his ego is so broken. Candace destroyed him, and so he he just he's blind. He's ego blind to see how bad he looks right now. He'll justify himself doing anything. I, so I yeah, there's, I, there's wait, a lot I, of I, I, with you. I don't think he even wait, wait, cares wait, about I Candace Owens. I think he's doing this because he's trying to take out Ben Shapiro. And he sees it, and he's trying to position himself That's to his donors. That's such a stupid point. Oh my god! To his so stupid as, as, the, as the top Jew of that donor group, and it's there's a huge war going on between Ben Shapiro and Shmuley Boteach. and, oh, and Candace dumb. Owens. He what he did to her was disgusting. You know what he did, did to this her was disgusting. This is really important. Hold on, wait, wait. Adam, I, I, hey, wait, we have we have understand. Jeremy yeah, Boring know, here. Yeah. Let's let's hear from Jeremy Boring. Jeremy Boring, come on up. Yeah, I don't have much to say, but somebody just asked the question, what's the Daily Wire's agenda and where does the money come from? And someone else said uh, there's a war between Ben Shapiro and Rabbi Shmuley for Jewish donors. Yeah, disregard the second point. It was retarded. Yeah. Uh, obviously, their Daily Wire doesn't have any donors. We're a for-profit company. Uh, and where the money comes from is our you know, tens of millions uh, large audience. We have a million subscribers. We have uh, a million people a day listening to the Ben Shapiro show. You make a lot of money when you run a good business. So I don't need to engage. The, in the Wilkes brothers didn't give you any money no. to start the Daily Wire. Of course they did. You mean did I okay. take startup capital nine years ago? Yes, I took four point seven million dollars nine years ago to start the Daily Wire. We did two hundred and twenty million dollars of revenue last year. Also, the Wilkes brothers aren't Jewish. The Daily Wire isn't owned by Jews. This is the thing that Rabbi Shmuley fails to comprehend, even though I've said it, Ben said it, even Candace has said publicly. Ben doesn't run the Daily Wire. He's not the majority owner of the Daily Wire. The Daily Wire is majority owned and run by Christians. The decisions that we make as a company, we make as Christian men. Uh, and if somebody wants to look for the great conspiracy of who, who makes the Daily Wire the way that it is, you look, if you want to look for somebody to blame for the Daily Wire, you're welcome to blame me because I'm the guy who makes the Daily Wire the way that it is. I just want to. I just sure. want to clarify my statement that it's Shmuley who's out there looking for donors. He's the one who his, uh, his, his, his Jer global Jer value diverge, is completely donor based. Jeremy, Jeremy, what did Candace do that she deserved to be fired? Well, I'm not going to have a conversation about Candace. Uh, when you run a business, you're not at liberty to have discussions about people that you fire. Uh, the, <laughs> I know that everybody would like for me to be able to do that. I'm not able to do that. Hey, uh, uh, J I'm, Jeremy, I'm not wait. Sure did the ADL or a media matters, did they contribute to your decision to fire her? No. Media matters is like the greatest gift ever given to the Daily Wire. I love that they literally pay people six figures a year to listen to all of my content and promote it for me. Uh, I can't believe that they continue to do it. It's the stupidest organization that ever existed. Uh, and the ADL's garbage. I don't care what the ADL thinks any more than I care what Rabbi Shmuley thinks. But Jeremy, I mean, I, I do view it as suspect that Candace appeared to have been fired a day after uh, the ADL came out with a hit piece on her saying that she was allying with anti-Semites like Nick Fuentes. I mean, when the when the ADL drops something like that and then Candace gets let go 24 hours later, it, it looks suspicious. Yeah, I, I understand that people who are looking for a conspiracy will find one. Uh, Ben Shapiro is as critical of the ADL as anybody out there. I've never met anyone at the ADL. I've never said a positive word about the ADL. The Daily Wire, I can't, don't think you can find a host at the Daily Wire who's ever had a positive thing to say about the ADL. So I can't, I, I can't prove a negative. I can't prove that I didn't fire Candace Owens because of the ADL. I can only tell you that I didn't fire Candace Owens because of the ADL. I don't well, I, I, so you're saying the that ADL. they speculated. I don't care anything about what the ADL publishes. You know what? Ben, ben Shapiro behaves a lot like the ADL, though. He months we he months he, he, he once made a list on Twitter of people that are quote unquote alt right, which at the time was used synonymously for white supremacist, and he listed everybody from Ron Paul. Ann Coulter, Mike Cernovich, Alex Jones, basically anybody that was anti-war, uh, Ben Shapiro listed as alt-right, a.k.a. white supremacist. So Ben behaves a lot like the ADL in trying to condemn people that are for America and against foreign aid or getting entangled in foreign war. So you can say, uh, oh, the Daily okay, Wire has no I'll agenda. Be, We're just funded sure by to, Christian I'll sure Zionists. I'll be sure to tell Excuse me? 
Hey, Jeremy. Oh, that's so I'm cute. That's so Harley, cute, wait, Jeremy. Hang on. Hang on. Wait, I, wait, I, wait, I have wait, an, actual... on, on. Well, yeah, hey, let me let, let me let jump in here. Let me jump in here. Okay, reset. Everyone can't talk over each other. <laughs> there will probably be a glitch. I'd like to ask a little bit more about uh, Candace Owens uh, being fired by the Daily Wire. I just want to preface this to say, like, I was an organizational psychologist for a while. I worked with a lot of organizations that were, quite frankly, larger than the Daily Wire in terms of, you know, helping them with staffing issues, working through the employees to fire, things like that. Jeremy, I'm just wondering, and I guess I'm asking this as a yes or no question, did Candace Owens violate any specific policies at the Daily Wire? And I'm not asking you to tell us which policies. I'm just asking, was she fired because she violated a company policy? I'm not going to make any comment about the Daily Wire separation from Candace Owens in this forum. So that's no then, just to be clear with everyone, that's that's no. She did not violate any well, company that, policies. <laughs> well, I don't, I, I don't, wait, I don't, wait, I don't we're not. That's a very sneaky way of ascribing to me let, an answer, answer that I did not give. If, if she violated a company policy, you would have been able to say yes to the question, Jeremy. I know that much. Okay, so Candace is not here. This is not about Candace specifically. Let's have a conversation around the broader issue, though. Andrew Clavin, who... Aside from this latest podcast, I, I really like, agree with a lot of what he says. He essentially said that Candace Owens could not work at the Daily Wire because of racial Jew hatred. And I think throughout this whole space, it seems like the running theme is that there's a lot of frustrations over things that are not Jew hatred being portrayed as Jew hatred. And that's basically what this entire conversation is about. Like now even Crisis King is being portrayed as Jew hatred. It, you know, you did a thread, Jeremy, or at least a post where you say that Crisis King can be anti-Semitic. I mean, it, is this where we are, where we're as conservatives saying that this is a dog whistle? No, no one is saying that Crisis King is a dog whistle per se. But certainly Christ is King can be a dog whistle. No one is saying that Christ is King is anti-Semitic per se. But of course, Christ is King can be anti-Semitic. When you, you, when you use a term, when you use a phrase, when you use anything, the purpose for which you use it determines a lot about what it is. Christ is King. That's a matter of fact. That is basic Christian doctrine. That is my belief. That is Andrew Clavin's belief. That's uh, the belief of, well, every actual Christian on planet Earth. Uh, that doesn't mean that one cannot use the term Christ as king to engage in anti-Semitism. Of course they can. There's an entire commandment in the Bible about not carrying forth the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Because, of course, one can do things in the name of God that are not things that God would want you to do. When you invoke the name of the king for something that isn't the actual purpose of the king, you're carrying forth the name of the king in vain. And I think that to pretend that people on X over the last week have not carried forth the name of the Lord God in vain, uh, is willfully, willfully deceptive. Of course people have been doing that. Is everyone who has said Christ is king in the last week on X carrying forth the name of the Lord in vain? No, I've said Jesus Christ is king, and many other people have said Jesus Christ is king because we believe that Jesus Christ is king. Uh, but that is certainly not the only usage that we've all observed on X. To pretend otherwise is ridiculous a and bad faith. Well, I mean, we, we have examples of people saying Christ is king, you nasty, and then slurs, which, you know, obviously is condemnable. But I guess, is it is it considered anti-Semitism if you are saying it specifically because this is someone who is Jewish who does not believe in Christ? Well, in what context? If I have a conversation with Ben Shapiro about the divinity of Christ, I might make an argument that Matthew as a gospel tends to elevate the position of Christ as king, whereas say, the book of John might elevate Christ uh, and his divinity. That's a perfectly reasonable thing to have a conversation with a Jewish person about. Uh, but if I don't like a Jewish person, I don't like something that they say, and I say, Christ is king, I might as well add uh, comma sucker exclamation point after it, then yeah, of course I'm doing something that's reprehensible, and I shouldn't use the name of God in that way. So even to say, can, is it anti-Semitism to say Christ is king to a Jewish person? In what context? Of course, it's not per se anti-Semitic to say Christ is king to a Jewish person. It happens to be a very true thing to say. But just because something is true doesn't mean that there's not a, a, a context in which it is a bad thing to do. 
Can I jump in here? Because I want to, I mean, the important thing, I think the operative word is context. I think everybody here acknowledges everyone here who's Christian, uh, maybe not Andrew and, uh, and Adam, but everyone here who's Christian would affirm that there is nothing, as you say, per se, anti-Semitic or problematic about saying Christ is king. It's a fact. But to the point, so really the, the operative word is context. In what context is being used? I think that's a point you're making. That's a point that Clavin made. What I'm interested in is everyone's focusing on whether Christ is king is anti-Semitic. But what was a little bit more shocking to me in what Andrew Clavin said was about Ben Shapiro. And he said that he would not wish Shapiro to become Christian because if Shapiro became Christian, it would cause devastation to himself and everybody in his life. And he almost seemed to suggest like that we shouldn't try to convert Shapiro, like to come on to him in this way and say, you should be Christian, Christ is king. Even in the context of evangelizing, Clavin seemed to push back on that and say, uh, actually, God put Shapiro where he needs to be and doesn't, and doesn't want Shapiro to be Christian, doesn't want Shapiro to say Christ is king because he's, you know, pushing family values or something in his station as uh, head of Daily Wire or rather as the head pundit on Daily Wire. So I'm wondering, do you agree with that? What is your position on what Clavin said? Because to me, that I think that's the important context when he said that Christ is King is anti-Semitic. And I think a lot of Christians were offended by that. I think it's a bit of a misrepresentation of what Drew said, though I will uh, acknowledge that Drew is often more clear because he's often more prepared. He went on the air that day and spoke from the heart, which isn't always what he does. He's usually more prepared than that. Uh, Drew, and also I want to be clear that Andrew Clavin can speak for himself and he's not here, but knowing Andrew Clavin and knowing his relationship with Ben Shapiro and knowing uh, a lot about his uh, theological outlook, having read his, his book, The Great Good Thing, about his own conversion, I think that it's fair to say that Drew was not implying that there is a, a way to the Father that doesn't go through the Son. I think that what he was saying is God is sovereign. He has people where he wants them. He has someone like Ben where he wants him. He has someone like uh, Jordan Peterson where he wants him. And Drew, my understanding of what Drew said is that Drew's belief is that God has them where he wants them and he'll get it sorted out. Uh, and that that's, I don't think Drew would, if he were here, I don't think that he would say that it's wrong uh, to evangelize Ben Shapiro any more than it's wrong to evangelize anyone else. That there's a, Again, context matters. There's a there's a way to evangelize someone that is useful and probably a way to evangelize someone that is not useful. But I don't think that Drew was trying to intimate that he believes that there is a path uh, to the Father that doesn't go through the Son. Obviously, salvation's a mystery. We're to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. Uh, and, and Drew is a Christian. I mean, again, I would encourage anyone to read The Great Good Thing, his Drew's book about his own... Uh, journey to Christianity, which is as unique as Andrew Clavin himself is. Uh, but I understand why a person who listened to what Drew said on his podcast might have come away with the impression that he was suggesting that, let's, let's not invoke Ben, let's invoke Jordan Peterson here, because it, it sidesteps other issues that are, that are contested on this particular conversation. But Jordan Peterson, uh, Drew is not suggesting that Jordan Peterson has a path to the Father that doesn't go through the Son. He's he's suggesting that uh, that God is using Jordan Peterson where Jordan Peterson is, and that not everything is always exactly not everything about how God works is always exactly obvious to us. Also, we live at a moment in linear time, and God takes a much different view probably than uh, than we do. And I think that's fair to say since virtually since there are no second generation Christians, and everyone on this space who is a Christian at some point was not a Christian. So I think that's what Drew was speaking to. Well, but he said specifically, and I'm not, you know, I'm just trying to ask the question here. He said specifically, because I just pulled up the quote, and I'm not trying to rip him apart because I do the same. I do a live stream. People take what I say out of context. Sometimes people that are friendly with you do this, but I'll be charitable and say, fair enough. He was off the cuff. I get it. He said, if Ben were to embrace Jesus, it would cause devastation to his family, to the people who love him, to the people who listen to him, to his position in the world. Now, that's I know you just gave an explanation. You can't speak for him, obviously. 
But that's a pretty outrageous statement to say that, I mean, literally, that's that's the quote, to embrace Jesus would cause devastation to his life and his position. I mean, certainly just on its face, the denotative meaning of those words, surely you would disagree with this, right? That it is always the right moment to embrace Christianity and that, like, obviously, no, no devastation could come from embracing Jesus, right? I mean, do you agree with this? I know I'm not trying to say take a side against Flavin, but I mean, let's just say the words as they are, you would disagree with this, right? I I disagree that uh, that the denotative meaning, meaning is the um, operative meaning in this setting. I don't have the transcript in front of me, but I recall that at the beginning of it, uh, Drew's actual opening statement about this particular issue did involve the primacy of Christ. Of course, I believe that devastation can come into people's lives when they embrace Christ. That devastation is worth it for the life that one has in Christ and for the freedom that one has in Christ. But of course, uh, Christ sets father against son and, and mother against daughter. And so obviously a lot of devastation comes into people's lives when they receive the gospel. I mean, you know, uh, Paul himself was shipwrecked and imprisoned and beaten and tormented. It's no, it's no, um, it's not child's play to become a Christian. But to the extent that you're saying that what Drew is is intimating is that now is a bad time for Ben to be a Christian because it would hurt his um, public position. I think that that's an uncharitable view of what Drew was likely saying, which is far more likely to be. Jordan is where Jordan is, and Ben is where Ben is, and God is doing what God is doing. And obviously, these issues are, um, obviously, the the issue of where a person is on their journey is a very complex one. But no, I don't believe if Drew were here today on this, in this conversation, that he would say that there's a bad time for someone to give their life to Christ. I think, and I'm just going to say this, and then other people can jump in, but I think uh, and I appreciate your, I think your, um, I think you're giving a thoughtful response to this. But if I were to just rebut kind of the whole premise, I think it's very interesting that when it comes to saying Jesus is king, or when it comes to remarks that Candace has made, or remarks that Ye has made, or even someone like myself has made, it seems like it's always the most uncharitable. It's always the motive is impugned. Always extrapolate the worst possible idea or the worst possible intention. But when it comes to the people on your side, when Ben Shapiro says, well, uh, Jesus was a rebel that got killed for his trouble, hands up, don't nail. When Andrew Clavin says, well, Shapiro can't accept Jesus because it would cause devastation in his life. Well, we almost have to read into it the co like the contrary meaning, like the connotative meaning or the intended meaning is like the opposite of what was said. So when it comes to people that talk about Israel or Jewish power or, you know, when they say Christ is king, well, they got to be super, super careful about how they say it. But if somebody says hands up, don't nail, when somebody says transfer is not a dirty word, which I'm sure you know what I'm talking about, when somebody says, you know, accepting Jesus is going to cause devastation, well, it's uncharitable to like read what they say. And I think that's kind of to the point of even what uh, somebody earlier was saying, which is this hypocrisy about cancel culture, you know, and I know I'm, you know, you're not these people, but Dave Rubin is to me the perfect example. As you know, the guy made his career saying, hey, I'm a liberal, but even though we disagree, we can have a conversation, don't burn my book, this kind of thing. And then I have personal knowledge that when people step out of line on Israel, he makes calls. Now you may refute that, other people may refute that. That is something I've heard. And of course he said on the Patrick Bed David show, uh, day after Candace Owens debated Barkley, he said, well, I don't consider Candace a friend anymore. And, you know, that's just the nature of the thing we're in. And it's like, I don't really know what that means because Ruben will have on socialist, communist, leftist, progressives, as well as many conservatives, and he'll be amicable towards them and, and nothing is off limits. But it does seem that one thing is off limits, and that's a thing that's very close to his heart. And that's the thing that's also intertwined with his business partner who is at Hebrew University and, and all these things. And I think what people are trying to say is that, like, it just seems like there's a great big double standard when it concerns Israel, Jews, uh, anything regarding those kinds of topics. 
as pertains to cancel culture, the free marketplace of ideas, um, and and everything else. I mean, so I mean, just to be honest with you, cards on the table. I'm not trying to like interrogate you. I'm I am actually listening to your response. That's how I feel, and that's kind of how I felt my whole career. Because yeah. last promise, last thing. You know, I used to be. I'm not saying this like you're missing my $15 subscription or whatever, but like when I was a teenager, I was a huge fan of all you guys, like Shapiro and like Clavin and even like Bill Whittle. I've been watching you guys since Truth Revolt and PJ Media, and I was putting out all those arguments. I mean, people be surprised to learn that I was like losing friends in high school because I was saying, hey, you know, Israel's fought off four wars of extermination and, you know, they're the most moral army. There's the uh, a beacon of democracy and a sea of barbarism. But then I started to notice as I got older, the peculiar nature of this, the special attention to Israel, the fact that there never seemed to be a criticism entertained, that that always fell outside the scope of the conversation. And then when I met people from Daily Wire and I asked them, I got rebuffed, I got shut down, I got canceled. And then people like Cassie Dillon who has since converted away from Christianity to Judaism, which is apostasy, a great sin, she clips the show and sends it to Media Matters. So, I mean, you guys, and and by the way, you say no one likes the ADL. Shapiro was reposting ADL after October 7th when Greenblatt went on and put everybody on MSNBC on blast, because I think you guys don't have a problem with the ADL. You have a problem with Greenblatt, because Greenblatt supports BLM, and, you know, he's a left-wing partisan. So. You know, that's where I'm coming from. It's not a place of Jew hatred. It's just a place of, I mean, I'm America first. I'm a Christian. These other people, they lost me when they started canceling over Israel stuff and encouraging apostasy and or saying we can't convert to Christianity. There's just Judeo-Christian thing. You lost me because it's just not true. I think my only response to that would be that, uh, and, and I think I've spoken long enough on a spaces that I wasn't actually invited to. So I appreciate everybody letting me speak at all. Um, I think that the amount of charity that we give to one is based on their body of work. I can give some charity to Andrew Clavin's positions uh, on his broadcast this last week uh, because he's spoken so extensively about his faith. He's written extensively uh, about his faith. He's probably one of the most forthright people uh, that I've ever met, you know, you can't get him to not tell you exactly what he thinks. And so I have a broad context with which to judge the things that he says. I have a broad context to understand the things that Ben says. Um, and, you know, Nick, to the extent that you've, to the extent that you've said things like when we come to power, we're going to kill the perfidious Jews. It's very hard 